Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. Some time ago I created a video about speakers and how you can make your own. I also covered how the speaker turns the current in the wire into sound by moving the cone with electromagnetism. So a few days ago one of my viewers posted a comment on that video. So he basically said that he got the idea how the speaker turns the electrical current into a magnetic field that then moves the coil up and down and that this will produce some kind of sound and I think he would imagine it to sound something like this right a single tone created by my signal generator up there but that definitely doesn't sound like any rock concert so he asks how does the speaker make all these sounds at the same time you know, you've got to have the bass in there, the guitar, the drums and the vocals. And all have to be playing at the same time. But we kind of only got one signal running through the speaker, right? So let's take a look at that. So let's start from the very basics. And what is sound actually? Well, sound is a wave of varying air pressure. And we all know that air pressure can move things and I could also inhale some air and create a negative pressure. Well of course that doesn't create any sound and that is because I cannot alternate between exhaling and inhaling air fast enough. If I could do that at a rate of 20 to 50 times a second then a tone would start to appear. So there was another term called frequency. So basically how many times a second the air pressure goes from normal to high, back to normal, down to low, and up to normal again. And if we want to create sound that we can actually hear, the alternating air pressure has to be at a rate of 20 to 20,000 times a second, or 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So let's draw this on a piece of paper instead. Well, we can say that this line here means normal air pressure. Everything above this line will be a high pressure and everything below will be a low pressure. So if we draw a curve here corresponding to what I just said, it should go high, back to normal, down to low, back to normal, high, normal, low and normal. And I think you all got it at this point, but basically when this curve here is right at the line, that means that the speaker is in its relaxed position in the middle here. When it's high, it means that the speaker cone will move outwards, and when it's low, it moves inwards. So it will blow air out, creating a high pressure in front of the speaker, and it will suck air in, creating a low pressure in front of the speaker. And it is when these high and low pressures hit our eardrum that we can hear a sound of course. Well that is just great, but we still only have a single tone and we all kind of knew that the speaker would be able to do that, right? And we have also only looked at a single wave so far. So let's try and move on and take a look at what happens when we have two waves in the same room. So let's start by drawing the zero line again here. And what we will have now is just a single part of the wave. So we will take the positive part here. And as I said, everything above the line is positive pressure and everything below is negative pressure. So let's say that we have one guy standing over here and he will yell something to this guy over here but this guy will also yell something to this guy over here. And let's pretend that these two people are yelling the exact same tone. So when these two guys yell of course this sound will go this way and this sound will go that way. But of course they will 
have to meet at some point and cross each other for this guy's voice to reach this guy in the other way around. So what is important is what happens when these two pulses meet at the middle. We call them pulses because they're just a single part of the waveform. Remember we have a positive pressure here and a negative pressure here. And if we mix those two, we will actually get zero again. So if you were standing right here in the middle, then you wouldn't actually be able to hear this exact part that these two people are yelling. Of course their waveform will look something like this and we're only looking at a tiny part of that so you wouldn't notice that something is missing. But of course the wave still moves on and as soon as these two are not in the same spot anymore it will look like this and the voice of this guy will reach this guy while it is also true the other way around. And also if two high pressures meet at the middle there will be an even higher pressure. And once the pulses continue the pressure will drop to what it was before. Of course two waveforms don't have to travel against each other. They could also travel the same way. So say these two guys are yelling something to this guy. The waveform coming towards this guy will look like this. But now that the two sound waves are moving the same direction, this waveform will never change. It will look like this all the way from here to here. Well, there is a little catch here because in the real world, of course, sound is not just a line like this. It would, of course, go in all three dimensions. And for this to be true, all these three guys will have to stay on the same line in a three-dimensional space. And that is because the sound waves will, of course, move in all directions. So we don't have to go any further into this, but you can see here the sound waves kind of follow each other, whereas to the sides they are making up these weird patterns. All that basically means is if you keep following this line, then it will stay like this. And if you follow any other line, then these bumps will shift a little bit around. Well, of course, sound and music is not just pulses, it is continuous waves. Like that. So, say we have a guitar that is playing this waveform here. And we also have a bass that is playing this waveform here. And of course the bass is a deep tone, so that is alternating slower than the guitar. So, say that these two instruments are playing over here and you are standing here. That will of course mean, as we just discovered, that these two sound waves will interact with each other and create one new sound wave. And when both of these are positive, it will go even higher. And when this is negative and this is positive, it should go back to zero. And they both go high again, so this will go high. They both go to zero, so this will go to zero. Now this one goes low and this one goes low, so this will also go low. Back up and back down again. And like that. And it will look something like this. Well, this is not a perfect drawing at all, but, but it kind of gives the idea. So there will actually not be two sound waves traveling towards you, even though two instruments are playing. When the two waves meet, they will interfere with each other and create one new sound wave that you can hear over here. 
So my calculator here is actually much better at drawing that than I am, so we will use that. So say we have this waveform here. This is our bass. And we will add our guitar also. And don't mind this math stuff, it's not really that important. So let's say the blue waveform is our bass and the red waveform is our guitar. And our guitar is playing at a bit lower volume, as you can see. The waveform is not as high as the blue one. So we can now kind of get the idea what will happen when we combine these two waves. If we start at this point here, you can see the blue one is starting to get higher and the red one is also getting higher. So we will expect that to get high. But at the middle of the blue waveform, the red one is at the lowest point. So we will expect it to be a drop down in the waveform again when this reaches the top. So the new waveform should have two tops and also two bottoms because this just happens to oops this just happens to fit exactly at each tip. And as you can see the black waveform is our new waveform. And you can see where the red and the blue is both high. The black one is rising faster than both the red and the blue. And we also get this kink downwards where the red one is lower. And now you might already guess what happened, but what if the guitarist started to play louder? Because he's annoyed that the audience can only hear the bass. And I'm sorry that this is getting a little messy, but you can see now the red waveform is higher and it is also adding more and subtracting more to the black waveform. So these high and low spikes are more dominant. So let me just remove the bass and the guitar waveform so that we are left with only the combined waveform. And now we can start to add more instruments. And if I now zoom out a little bit, you can see this actually starts to look a little bit like an audio waveform. And remember we only have four tones in there. And something like a guitar will usually have six strings. And each string will not even produce a clean tone. So you will already have more than six tones from a guitar. You can imagine we can very fast get hundreds of different tones. And that is why the audio waveform that you see on your computer or the television might look like there's not much meaning to it at all. So now that we get the idea that we are actually only hearing a single waveform even though multiple instruments are playing, we can also kind of see how the speaker would reproduce the sound of these two instruments. It would go up at the first part, poof, back to zero, up, then it would go down, down, up, up, right? And of course this will go much faster than what I showed here. But now we already got these two tones to play on a single speaker. So I think we will also take a look at how we can easily make this with an electronic circuit. If we still use the same waveforms from the previous page, it is actually pretty simple to combine these with an electronic circuit. All we need is two resistors. And if we want them to mix equally, we will have to use the same value resistor. And of course by using a 1K resistor, we will drop the current significantly at this point here. So that wouldn't be very practical if we don't amplify the signal again. But there is one difference from the waves to the electronics. 
if you remember I said that with waves if you have two waves then they will add at this point and subtract at this point so if we call this pressure or amplitude 1 and we call this 1 then we could get an amplitude of 2 on the new waveform this resistive circuit doesn't work like that it will take the average of these two waveforms it will work exactly the same except that the maximum value here can only be a 1 of course and that makes perfect sense because if we translate this into voltage if we have 1 volt here and 1 volt here and no current will flow through these resistors so it can only flow this way so we'll have 1 volt here as well and if this is 1 volt and this is minus 1 well then we'll have 1 volt here minus 1 here and we'll get 0 in the middle and of course we're not limited to only having two instruments. We could have, say, drums, bass, a guitar, piano, and so on. And then just connect all these notes and tab off one single line. And if we wanted to get this into our real world wave again we will have to amplify it by 4 and we can do that with an op amp and as I have mentioned in my previous video about op amps the gain for a non-inverting amplifier is just 1 plus this resistor divided by this resistor and that will equal 4, of course. So if I explained that well enough, we should be able to figure out how these waves will combine and get into something like this. We know that both in the real world and with the electronics, the waves will kind of combine the same way. So we can take this signal and we can feed it in to the wire of our speaker and it will sound like we still have all these waveforms separately. So if this was helpful in any way, please give it the thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my channel. I am actually planning to build an audio amplifier that will use this technique to combine the audio signals. I don't know when I will have time to build it though, so you'll have to wait for it. Anyway. Thanks for watching this video and I will see ya.